Lord Maroga. Tank the boss in the middle, tank stack up, the boss will shoot fire in a line towards a faraway target, however there is a dead zone in the melee where the fire will not hit. It is a good idea to have your healers stack in here. Have your range stand out to bait the fire. In 25 man you need 8 people stood out to bait the flames. The boss will impale random players, they'll take ticking damage until the spike is killed. After 45 seconds, Maroga will begin spinning at a rate of 2 worlds per wind. Spread out around this room as it'll jump from far away raid members. After this it will go back to the first phase. Rinse and repeat. Lady Death Whisper. Healers in range spread out behind the boss. The boss has a mana shield that you'll need to DPS down before you need to worry about tanking it. Watch out for death and decay on the ground. The boss also mind controls. You'll need to CC them. Be careful not to kill them as you'll be AoEing the adds that spawn. Adds spawn from both sides of the room. Have tanks pull them towards the boss so you can AoE them down. Melee, Prio Adherence. Ranged Prio Fanatics. Melee should try and interrupt all casts of the Adherents. Fanatics will cleave. Both types of ad can enrage. Purge it. Make sure you focus decursing your raid. Sometimes an ad will begin casting Dark Martyrdom. This will self-destruct them and cause big AoE damage. It will also reanimate that ad. This causes the adherents to take no spell damage. Just tank them normally and melee DPS them down. Reanimated fanatics take no physical damage. They also lifesteal a lot, so don't bother having a tank pick them up. Simply range kite and slow them as you nuke them down. Once the mana shield of the boss is depleted, phase 2 will begin. Clear up any remaining adds and begin DPSing the boss. Move the boss out of death and decays. There will be an AoE frostbolt every 20 seconds. Little ghosts will spawn around the room and fixate players. If they reach you, they will explode. Avoid that happening. Gun shit. Talk to the goblin and equip the jump pack. Keybind it so you can use it easily. Have some people sit in the cannons. You want to spam cannon blast until your energy is high and then unload with the second ability incinerating blast. Do not go over 100 energy or you will overheat and get locked out for 5 seconds. I mean, I don't need to tell you that you need to shoot the other ship, right? Watch out for rockets landing on the ground. Adds will spawn on your ship, tank them and DPS them down. The sergeants do a blade storm so watch out melee. Your cannons will get frozen. At this point you want to tank some healers and DPS to jump over to the other boat. Tank, pick up the commander. He does increased damage over time. Your DPS needs to kill the mage first. Once the mage is dead, you can jump back to your ship. However, you can also stay and kill any other adds on the ship. Stay as long as your tank can survive. Repeat this. Sawfang. This boss is a DPS race, range spread out by at least 12 yards. Tank swap when he casts Rune of Blood. When the boss reaches 100 energy, he'll put a mark on a player. That player will take massive damage for the rest of the fight. You want to keep them up. If they die, the boss will heal by 5% health. The mark persists even if you get battle rest. You need to kill the boss before too many of these marks go out. Blood Boil will be put on random players. It is a dot that also gives the boss energy each tick, so try to immunity it off. Blood Nova will target a random player and do AoE damage. This is why you're spread. Adds will spawn periodically on the boss. They are pretty much immune to AoE damage. Range need to CC and nuke these down quick. Any damage they do will give the boss energy, so there's no point the tanks picking these up if ranged can kite. Enrage at 30%. Fester Gut. This is a DPS race again. There is raid wide ticking damage throughout the fight. Tank him in the middle. Tank swap at 9 stacks. Range spread out around the room. Vile gas will be put on a player that does AoE damage. Three gas spores will go out on random players. You need to stack close in three separate groups for this. Two in ranged and one in melee. Gas spores will explode after a short while and put a short dot on anyone affected. However, it'll also give you a buff that'll help you survive a later mechanic. You need three stacks of this buff to survive the fight. Every 30 seconds, Festigurt will start huffing his farts. This reduces the raid-wide ticking damage, but now makes him high as f*** and hit like a machine. Once he has done this three times, he has reached a state of euphoria and his melee attacks rip through the fabric of time and space. You should use cooldowns on the tank to stay alive. Cockface. Who's <laughs> Wolf? These will fill a quarter of the side of the room, switching every 20 seconds, spread out around the boss. Every now and then the boss will cast a slime spray, he'll target a random raid member and do a conal. Just move out the way. The boss will cast mutated infection on players. You want to run to the edge of the circle with this, dispel the debuff, and add will spawn from it. It will fixate the player that had the debuff. You want to kite it around the room. When a second player gets the infection, you want to run in front of the ad already being kited and get dispelled. The off tank should go with them. You want to collide the oozes. This will cause them to merge and become a big ooze. It is now tauntable, but it deals insane amounts of damage. So have your tank kite it around the room. Every time a new debuff goes out, simply dispel it in the path of the big ooze so it merges. Once it has merged five times, Times, it'll explode and will rain down on the ground. Avoid it. Professor Putricide. Phase 1. 
Have your off-tank run up to the table and drink the potion. This will turn them into an abomination. They need to run over and suck up all the slime pools that spawn. This will give them energy to use other spells. Two types of ads will alternatingly spawn at either of the ooze tanks on the side of the room. Green will fixate a target and root them in place. If it reaches that target, it'll explode and deal split AoE damage and knock back. Orange will fixate a player. They can still move though. They'll take ticking damage whilst it's alive, and if it reaches the player, will explode and do massive raid-wide damage. The abomination tank should prioritize slow slowing the slimes, then sucking up puddles, and then killing the boss. The best strategy is to just tank the boss next to the green slime spawn. Nuke the green ad when it spawns, but if it targets a melee, you'll probably get hit. Since everyone is stacked already, the AoE damage won't be that bad. When the orange slime spawns, you will already be far away, and range can nuke it down whilst it makes its way over. At 80%, the boss will enter phase 2. It is exactly the same as phase 1, but now the boss will drop two choking gases behind him every now and then. This will put a dot on you and make you miss for 15 seconds, so don't run into it. Try to position the boss so his back is facing the wall, wait for him to drop the gas and then move back into position. He'll also throw oozes towards players, they'll bounce towards where a target was when he first threw it. Move out of this. At 35% you'll enter phase 3. This is a big DPS race. Your off tank will be booted out of the abomination. Since you can no longer get rid of the slime, you'll need to start kiting the boss around the room away from the growing slime puddles. The boss will put a stacking debuff on the tank that will hit the entire raid. It will persist for the rest of the fight. It'll probably become unhealable at 5 stacks. You want to have your tanks taking 1 or 2 stacks each time and then taunting off. If you find you can't beat this phase in time, try adding a third tank so you can split the stacks longer. Blood Prince Council these bosses have shared health. Every 45 seconds, one of the bosses will become empowered. Only the empowered boss will take damage. There is no reason to AoE on this fight. Their abilities will also do some extra stuff. Spread out around the room, have a tank on each boss, and begin building threat. If you're doing 10 man, have a ranged DPS tank, Kelaseth. Kelaseth deals shadow damage to their target. He will also spawn shadow orbs around him. Your Kelaseth tank wants to gain threat on these, as they will channel shadow resistance onto them, making it easier to tank the boss. When empowered, Kelaseth just deals greater shadow damage. Valinar spawns bombs around the room that will slowly fall to the ground and explode. You need to hit them with a few attacks to keep them floating. You cast Shock Vortex, this will knock back a player and leave an orb on the ground. You must avoid this orb. When empowered, this ability will hit the entire raid but won't leave any orbs. Taldoran will do a frontal ability on a player, leaving a dot on anyone in the way. Conjure Flame is a ball that will move towards an AoE explode on a player. It will do less damage the longer you kite it. When empowered, the damage is only reduced when it passes through a player. Melee should try run into it when they see it spawn. Blood Queen. Spread out around the room, tanks stack tightly on one another. The boss does link damage to the person closest to the main tank. The off tank will also get a bleed every now and then. The boss will pulse AoE damage. Swarming shadows will be cast on a player. It will drop fire on the ground. Try drop it on the edges of the room. If you get beams on you, run to the other beamed players to get rid of it. 15 seconds into the fight, the highest threat DPS will get bitten. This increases their damage by 100%. After 60 seconds, they will have a small window in which they must bite another player. Otherwise, they will become mind controlled. Set up an order in which you want DPS to be bitten. Every two minutes, the boss will run to the center and fly up in the air. It will fear and drop loads of splash damage on the raid, so spread out. Drop Tremors, Master Spell, Fear Ward. Vilithria Dreamwalker. Your main objective of this fight is to heal the boss to full, so if you can off-spec heal, do it. Portals will spawn throughout the fight, only the healers want to take. You have 15 seconds to run into them. Once inside, you will be able to fly. You have 20 seconds to fly into as many red clouds as you can. This will give you a 40 second debuff that deals damage, but gives you mana regen and healing increase. Portals will appear every 20 seconds, and you want to stack this buff as much as possible. Split the tanks and DPS and two healers into two groups. You will not be taking the portals, and will deal with the adds. The prio is as follows. Skeleton does AoE that hits the boss too, suppresses, they channel a mortal strike on the boss, Archmages summon stuff on the ground that you need to move out of, Zombies put a stacking dot on the tank, try to kite them whilst range bursts these down. Abominations. They don't really do too much. Syndra Goza. Tank the boss here, watch out for Cleave and the Tail Whip. There is a raid wide ticking damage throughout this fight. The boss will periodically pull the raid into it and then do a big AoE. Run away from this. Melee will get stacks of a dot permeating chill as they attack. Stop attacking to reset this. Range will get stacks of a dot unchained magic, which will deal damage every 5 seconds depending on how many spells you cast. Stop casting to reset this. When the boss flies up, run towards the stairs. A few people will be marked. The marked people should stack in groups of 2 at the bottom of the stairs. Marked players will become frozen and deal splash AoE damage when first entombed. Similar to Saffron, you want to hide behind these ice blocks to avoid the explosions. There are 4 explosions in random locations 
position, so you'll need to constantly run around the ice blocks to position out of line of sight. The ice tombs have a health bar, and it's up to you to DPS them down to free the player. Try not to kill them before all four explosions go off. At 35%, the boss will no longer fly up in the air. Players will now get a stacking debuff on them, which increases damage taken. Every now and then, a player will be frost tombed. You will utilize this frost tomb by line of sighting the boss. This will drop the stacking debuff. You probably want to run into melee like so, and then have the raid stack behind this and drop your stacks. Just be careful as the frost tomb does AoE damage when it's first applied. The Lich King Phase 1. Tank the boss here, off tank pick up the shambling horrors and tank them away from the group and facing away. They periodically enrage. Purge it. If you get necrotic plague, run to the shambling horror and get decursed. You'll jump to the closest target. It needs to be the shambling horror. Repeat this for the rest of the phase. Once the phase is over and all the shambling horrors are dead, the curse will jump to the off tank, dispel them away from everyone else. Passively cleave any other small adds on this phase. Infest is a raid wide AoE that does increased damage over time. You need to top everyone off above 90% health to get rid of it. Every time Necrotic Plague jumps from a target, the Lich King's damage will increase, so towards the end of this phase you'll need to cycle cooldowns on the main tank. At 70%, the intermission phase begins. Quickly run to the outside platform, have the tanks pick up the Raging Spirits. They do a frontal that silences, so face them away. Nuke them down. Ice Balls will spawn in the middle of the room that will travel towards the raid. Range nuke them down. After 60 seconds, the phase will end, and the edge of the platform will be destroyed, so get back in the main circle. Phase 2 will still have the Infest mechanic. Tank swap when they get hit by Soul Reaper. Every 45 seconds, Valkyr will spawn and pick players up. They will begin flying towards the edge of the platform to drop them to their death. CC and nuke these down. You want to try and stack up in melee when the Valkyr are about to spawn. Every 30 seconds, the boss will cast Defile. This will mark a player and cause them to drop a black smoke pool on the ground very shortly after. This pool does damage and rapidly increases in size if a player is stood inside it. You need to run away as soon as you get this, and your raid needs to run the opposite direction. If you drop this in the raid, it will pretty much instantly fill the platform. There will be an overlap with Valkyr and Defile at some point. It is better to stay spread for the Defile than to stack for the Valkyr. At 45% you will get another intermission. This is the same as before with one extra add. Once the intermission is over, tank the boss on the edge, nuke down any extra adds you have left. He no longer casts Infest or Valkyrs. Every 30 seconds he will cast Vile Spirits. This will spawn adds on your location. Once they spawn, run to the opposite side of the platform. Adds will run towards players and explode on impact. You want your off tank to try and intercept them all and eat all the explosions away from the raid, or anyone with an immunity. Every 60 seconds, the boss will cast Harvest Soul on a player. This will transport them to a room in which they'll help some dude kill something. If you're a healer, heal the friendly target. If you're a DPS, DPS and interrupt the unfriendly target. Once the boss reaches 10% health, I don't know what happens next. We always wiped on this part and went again. Maybe you'll be more fortunate. Good luck. Well, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. Thank you to my patreon patrons and my channel members i love you so much um i wish i could be there to hold you whilst we watch these videos together sadly i cannot um good luck in ice crown farewell